And welcome back, students. It is your favorite teacher, Mr. Jacobson. I'm excited to be here with you. We're, today we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, the succession of uh, of the papal line um, and papal power, which are the the uh, the leaders of what later became the Catholic Church. So there's going to be continuation in the in Christianity. And uh, it's going to have a big break. We've talked about that break called the schism, which is um, between the West and the East. So there's a lot to talk about. I'm excited to be with you today. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so the beginning of papal power. So St. Peter was one of the, uh, the uh, original 12 apostles of Christ. He was also the Bishop of Rome from 42 to uh, 67 CE. He was martyred by Roman Emperor Nero and buried at the current site of St. Peter's Beliscia in the uh, Vatican City. So the very Peter that you probably heard about that uh, followed Jesus and was one of his apostles in the New Testament of the Bible, <clears throat> the Catholic Church claims that that is their first pope. So it's the actual apostle that, that, uh, G that knew Jesus. And from down from Peter came the, a continual line of successions of popes who passed on that authority. So the doctrine of Paul's succession, the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church claims that all the bishops have been ordained or or proved by other bishops through unbroken lines beginning from the original twelve apostles of Jesus Christ. Now the primacy of the Church of Rome, so we have Pope Stephen was the first bishop to claim the primacy or leadership of the Church of Rome. Now Emperor Galerius issued an edict of toleration for all religious creeds including Christianity. So here's a picture of Christ giving the keys of the kingdom. When they say keys, keys is another word for authority because if you have the keys then you have the power or the authority to open up that whatever that gate or lock was. And so the handing him the key would be a, a great honor and, and would be symbolic of giving him power. <clears throat> so Constantine the Great. You've heard about Constantine. We know a little bit about Constantine. I'm not going to go too much into him, so just go ahead and read through this and you can just refresh your memory of what Constantine did. Through the Bishop of Rome claimed uh, primacy. We have the bishops of Jerusalem, Antioch, Alexandria, Constantinople also claim special importance to the Christian church. So we're seeing um, in the uh, Roman Empire, we're seeing very s a couple of uh, centers that are becoming really important to the Christian churches. Uh, and each of them are slowly kind of creating their own leader to, you know, that is separate from the Catholic church that will be formed. <clears throat> Under the Constantine, Christianity became the preferred religion of the state. Priests and monks were exempted from the personal service and taxation. Christians were preferred for administrative posts. And bishops were entrusted with judicial responsibilities, snods, snods. Ecclesiastical committees were convened to settle religious questions, as you can see here. Gregory the Theologian presided over part of the First Council. First Council of Constantinople. You can see Gregory here and you can see the people who are attending that meeting. Gregory being the leader or the high, highest authority at that meeting. Primacy of Rome through St. Peter. So we have Pope Damascus I. He claimed that Rome's uh, primacy <coughs> were based on St. Peter's legacy as Bishop of Rome. So again, we have this other person, individual, saying, look, we are the true uh, Christian religion because we can claim and we, we profess that, um, that Peter, and since Peter, each pope after Peter has been um, kind of ordained by God just like Peter was. <clears throat> In 444, uh, Pope Leo the Great claimed the full range of apostolic powers that Jesus had first bestowed upon the Apostle Peter. So now we're having a Pope, Pope Leo, who's claiming that he has the same apostolic powers as Peter did. <clears throat> Rome 
Roman emperors endorsed the primacy of the Church of Rome in an effort to maintain their secular power as leaders. 5th century emperors Theodosius II and Valentinian III proclaimed the Roman bishop to be the leader of the entire church. So the power of the papal of the of the pap the papacy the papacy grows stronger. And five oh two we have the Pope who ruled that only higher clergy was eligible to vote for a new Pope. <clears throat> and then the Byzantine Empire we have Justinian who recognized the primacy of the the holy as well. King Pepin rescues the Church of Rome. We talked a little bit about this. So Pepin uh, asked King the, the Pope Stephen II asked Pope King Pepin III of the Franks to defend the Church of Rome against the Lombards. Pepin defeated the Lombards and returned the land to the Pope. This ter territory would become the papal, the papal states. Now, the Pope crowns the Emperor of the Roman Empire in 772, Pepin's son, Charlemagne. We've talked about this before. Charlemagne protects him. The guy, uh, the, the Pope at the time, uh, Pope Leo, he anoints Charlemagne to be the official Emperor of the Kingdom. <clears throat> Independent papes, papal, uh, papal, papal states. We have Otto I, in case the King of Germany, conquered northern Italy in 951. Uh, Pope John XII crowned him emperor. They signed the uh, diploma Aut Autoninium, which, con which guaranteed the independence of the papal state. Authority of the of the the papacy wanes. Okay, so during the 10th century, the papacy became came under the control of local Roman noble families. At times, German kings would invade Rome and anoint their own pope. So, not a lot of continuity is happening here. See, <clears throat> because Rome is such a sought after city, many people started attacking and wanting to control that city well when they controlled the city they just take out the old pope and put their own pope who more agrees with them so they wouldn't have any problems on that front henry the third controls the papacy so in 1046 benedict the ninth and sylvester the third gregory the sixth all claim to be the official pope king henry the third disposed all three and held a snod where he anointed Clement II. Afterwards, Clement II crowned King Henry III as Holy Roman Emperor. Henry III controlled the papacy until his death in 1056. Uh, and so we have the, the king who kicks out all the other people who are claiming to be pope, puts the guy he thinks should be pope, in turn, Clement II, then turns to Henry the Third and claims him as the official emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. <laughs> so there's a lot of um, sc I scratch your back, you scratch mine, going on. We have the Normans who who swear fealty to the uh, Pope as well. I'll give you a chance to go ahead and read that. I'm not going to go too much into that. Gregorian reforms. So Gregorian reform was a series of reforms in the Catholic Church initiated by Pope Gregory the Seventh. Okay, Pope Gregory wanted the church and his clergy to be governed only by the Roman Curia, the official court of the Church of Rome. So now we have someone who says, look, the only person who should govern Rome are, is the church itself. So now there's, uh, there's debate over that. Now, Pope Gregory, here's some of the things that he uh, tried to establish, he, he, he was in, in favor for that the Roman pontiff alone is rightly called universal, that he alone has the power to dispose and reinstate bishops. The pontiff is the pope, by the way. That he alone may use the imperial insignia, that all princes shall kiss the foot of the, the pope alone, that he has the power to dispose emperors, that he can be judged by no one. Interesting. <clears throat> that no one can be regarded as Catholic who does not agree with the Roman Church, that he has the power to absolve subjects from their oaths and fealty to w wicked rulers, etc. So, 
We have uh, Pope Gregory the Seventh, who's really trying to increase papal power at this time. <clears throat> so the investor controversy. So the investor controversy changed the balance of power between popes and emperors. It was a dispute between Pope Gregory the Seventh and Holy Roman Emperor uh, Henry the Fourth, the son of Henry the Third, over who would control investors, meaning the appointment of uh, church officials. So, <clears throat> big question went out. Who gets to appoint Roman officials? Is it the Pope or is it the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire? We have a schism. Schism means we have a separation. We have the East and West. So, the East West Schism of 1054 divide the Holy Roman Empire into Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy. We talked about this. Remember about icons and all that as well. We, we discussed this before in the early part of the year. The primary cause of the schism were disputes over papal authority. The Pope claimed to hold authority over the Eastern Orthodox Church. There was also strong debate over the insertion of the Philoqua uh, clause into the Nicene Creed. So the West and the East Church not seeing eye to eye. They separate and uh, and we discussed the, the some of the consequences of it a year ago so in the clause this is one of the big things was in this clause it says as you read way down below here you can read the whole thing I don't care but we're just gonna stick with this down, down below here we believe in the Holy Spirit now the the Nicene Creed was a, a like 500 um, officials of a church got together I think it was in 600 AD or I can't remember um, but they got together and sort of voted on what they think is the official doctrine of the church. So <clears throat> it's done by popular consent. Um, anyway, so we believe in the Holy Spirit, okay, who proceedeth from the Father to, we believe in the Holy Spirit, who proceedeth from the Father. So they used to say that the Holy Spirit proceedeth from the Father, Hold on. I'm confusing myself now. Just a second. Okay, so they said that the Holy Spirit produced the Father. So that the, the Father and the Son, so God the Father and Jesus, they were produced by the Holy Spirit. And uh, they wanted to change that to say, no, 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 no. No, we believe in the Holy Spirit who proceedeth from the Father, meaning, no, it was the Holy Spirit that came from God, not the other way around. The Nicene Creed may sound like the Holy Spirit produced the Father and the Son, and they're trying to change it and say, no, 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 God the Father, He's one that made the Holy Spirit come. So, again, they're, 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 they're arguing over their own doctrine. Separation of the Roman Catholic and Orthodox Churches. Conflicts between the churches of Rome and Constantinople led to the exchange of excommunication. Excommunication means when you're kicked out of the church by the representatives of Pope Leo the Ninth, who had died earlier in the year, and the Patriarch of Constantinople. And we've talked about this as well. So, we have emperor loses the right to ordain bishops uh, here. French kings dominate the popes of Aving Avignon. And then the return of the Pope to Rome. So Pope Gregory the Ninth, Pope of 1370 to 1378, returned to the papacy to uh, to Rome. His return in 1377 was influenced by the urging of Catherine of Sina Sina. Okay, in 1378, the cardinals elected a Roman Pope, Urban the Sixth. Soon after, the cardinals rejected Urban VI and moved back to Avignon to elect Clement VII. Two rival popes ruled the church until the Council of Constance in 1414, elected Pope Martin V. The schism ended and the papacy returned to Rome. A lot of problems going on in the Roman Catholic Church, as you can see. They're not sure who is actually in charge who has the authority, etc. <clears throat> Here's the map of the schism 
The blue countries represent the countries that allied with Rome, and the red countries are allied with Avignon. And then the state of the Vatican City, we have the Pope Pius the Eleventh turned over the Papal States to the Italian government under Benito Mussolini in the Lateran Treaty in 1929, creating the state of the Vatican City. So, uh, it was during this time that the Pope actually got officially their own city where, uh, where they have their own sovereignty, uh, very similar to what ha what Pepin gave them way back in about uh, 900 uh, A.D. So, and that's pretty much it for how the whole papacy works. A lot of confusion in the successions, and if you are confused, I understand. Um, I think we're going to stop right there, though. Yeah. Okay, guys, so go ahead and write your summary. I look forward to really trying to break this down and uh, talk, discuss this with you on the first of the week. Okay, bye-bye.